Hell, we got to change the way we see the problem if we're gonna fix this place. My color of your face. Welcome back. There's a lot of people out there who, well, actually, just a few people out there who are terribly keen to see humanity enslaved and uh, turn into a bunch of slovenly demon worshipping scum. Fortunately, <laughs> there's more people out there who, who are pretty much not keen on that. The, uh, the difficulty is, of course, a lot of them are into the uh, so called counterculture, which is all part of this. <laughs> Now, we're talking about, I wanted to uh, see if we, you know anybody, big names in the entertainment industry that, that are uh, really into the occult. Who, 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 who's, who's on this list here? I mean, I would, I would, I would, I would lump Lady Gaga in there. Who's not on the list, Vinny? Who's not on who's the list? Who's not on the list? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would, you would be more accurate to find the, the minority who are not on the list, but you have to understand that Hollywood and the director's couch is much like big labels. There's a lot of soul selling to be on a big record label contract. Bottom line, it's unavoidable. And when you sign that contract, they own you lock, stock and barrel. You're going to dress like they say, they're gonna bring in choreographers, even in heavy metal to show you how to move on stage. And they even bring in studio musicians, having been there, done that to show certain famous rock bands, how to play those musical parts that they're not really good at, but they're pretty. You know what I'm saying? Well, what kind of, you said they had to sell their soul. I mean, what, what, how, what, why? Well, uh, they own you as a piece of property. You lose all autonomy and creative license when you are on a big label. You have to understand in the recording industry, it's not the artist. The technology is so high right now, they can bring in a person who has no talent and make them sing like an angel with, with a tool like the Antares uh, Quick Tune that will take a person's voice and make it musical on pitch instantly. And all. And it's this kind of technology that produces the cold audio illusions that you hear on big label music. You know, it, it's very. You know? Sorry, let's take let's take a classic individual like Jay Z. Do you think it's the fact that they own him, or do you think he's into it also? Because I Look, seem to think that the guy seems to be obsessed with their cult on his own accord. Well, they are. A lot of them are deeply involved in occult activities, and part of what got him the contract is the fact that they were involved and like it. You know, a lot of these people that get involved. In occult activity, weren't slaves to it. They just got into it because they really liked it. And the wealth, the fame, the fortune, the big houses, the cool cars, the many pretty women or men that they're going to have as groupies, you know, is a very tempting uh, thing to these people, you know, that rise to become stars. But it's the same thing in Hollywood. All the big stars, you know, going clear back to the 20s and in the antiquities of Hollywood, were playing around on the director's couch, both men and women, like John Wayne, was notoriously gay, but that was the macho gay culture that things like disco evolved from in the 70s. So can you explain to the listeners, by um, putting checkered floors and, and all-seeing eyes and pyramids and, and using phrases out of the Book of the Law and all the sort of things that Jay-Z and Beyonce and Rihanna do... What are they trying to exact? Is it a metaphysics uh, that they believe um, propels into the minds of people and therefore builds reality? Or how is it in your experience that um, they believe it will have an effect on the viewer? Well, if you go back and you watch the old Led Zeppelin film uh, <clears throat> and everything where that, that was made into a kind of a movie that had fantasy scenes of each of the members of Led Zeppelin, the song remains the same. You see them on stage in New York City, and Jimmy Page, a very avid Aleister Crowley uh, follower, doing holding up a violin bow like a magic wand and facing four directions and doing the minor banishing ritual of the pentagram on stage. In that film sequence that shows him doing his thing and everything while they're playing dazed and confused, and he's got a violin bow, but he's turning counterclockwise or Wittershins pointing to the four directions or watchtowers 
and he's doing a ritual on stage to invoke powers and entities, demonic entities, right there in Madison Square Garden in New York. And when these people perform and that are knowledgeable about the occult, they are performing an occult ritual on stage, like when you saw the MTV Music Awards where Madonna, dressed as a groom, goes down 13 Masonic steps to meet her brides in all Christina Aguilera and Britney Spears and all and pass on priestessdom to them. The next it's generation form of Enochian magic, isn't it? Well, the Enochian magic was also foundational, and that's the secret of the Watchtowers and the Jehovah's Witnesses. And all the Enochian magic system that John D. got when he was in Poland, likely from King Stephen and everything who was related to Countess Elizabeth Bathory, the mass murderess, who killed over 650 women for blood to bathe in, and she was the real vampire in history. And Stephen Bathory, her relative at that time, who ruled Poland, was also playing host to Dr. John D., the first 007, the real 007. And his yeah, partner, Queen Elizabeth's uh, physician. And spy. And founder of it. Yeah. Yeah. He was 007, and uh, all of a sudden he got that Enochian system there in Poland, likely from Stephen Bathory, and. Uh, playing with the watchtowers and the demonic dimensions. And all. Aleister Crowley, when he did the Sahara working in the year 1909 with his partner Victor Newberg in the Sahara Desert, was doing Enochian magic when he wrote his book, The Vision and the Voice, which is uh, visions of the different dimensions. Wow. Thanks so much, Ricky, for coming on the show with us today. Do you have a website if people want to uh, divulge a little bit more and uh, get, well, hopefully not get into the occult, but certainly research it a little? Well, you know, I would recommend two websites of fellow researchers of mine. One is in the no 7 on WordPress.com, who has done fantastic work into mind control and MK Ultra, and his partner, Esoteric Kitten on YouTube, who has exposed the entertainment and activities and mind control rampant in a series of videos that are a must see for those who want the truth. All right, thank, thank you, you, Ricky. Ricky, yeah. bro, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming on. We'll certainly have to have you on once again. You're listening to the Vinnie Eastwood Show. We'll be back soon. <laughs> Because, uh, you know, it's just so freaky and weird and so out of this world that it's it's, it's freaking difficult to process, quite frankly. And, uh, you know, I thought I knew a, a little bit about the occult and, uh, and this kind of stuff. But the, the level of debauchery, disgust and avarice and sinfulness and the, you know, all the other aspects of demonology is just too terrible to accept. 